guys, it's Andy. Check this out. This is going to be a video that a lot of you have been asking me to make. You've been saying, Andy, how do I move up through the ranks in the car business? As a salesperson, I want you to understand this, right? There's a way to move up, and I call it the fast lane to killing it. But something that you got to understand is that it's not always about moving up. It's not about the title. It's about the money or it's about becoming a leader. So a lot of people say, hey, Andy, I want to move up through the ranks. Obviously, let me go over the ranks with you for just a second. It's going to be salesperson, finance, a desk man, a GSM, a GM, and then even an owner. But I want to tell you this. The most important thing that you've got to understand is don't chase the title. Chasing the title means nothing. If you go to Google and you type in Andy Elliott sales record, you'll see I made 715 grand selling cars. I made over 2 million as a GM. Now I want you to think about this. I specifically planned myself to be able to move up and be extremely good at what I did so when I got to the next level, I'd be a high earning person. My goal was, and I kind of use this, you know like the stock charts, right? In the stock market, they kind of do this and they do this and they do this. This is what a salesperson's life usually looks like as they scale through the ranks. They're in sales, they start to go up, guess what? They get a promotion and they go boom and they drop an income. You know why? Because the best salespeople always earn more money then their finance guys, their desk guys, and even sometimes the GSMs. Now, I want you to understand this. Your goal needs to be not to chase the title, but to chase more money, earning more. Now, look, now I'm going to tell you something. Everything in life isn't about money. I'm a leader. The more I do for other people, the more I get done for me. So when I decided as a salesperson, I'm going to explain this to you and talk about moving up through the ranks. You only have to take care of yourself. This is you right now. Everything that you do is your fault. Good and bad. If you kill and go make $50,000, it's all on you. If you go and sell four cars, it's all on you. This is the life of a salesperson. Okay. You don't have to worry about finance, CIT, cash flows, sending deals to the banks. You don't have to worry about any of that. All that's already handled for you. Inventory. Is the car getting old? Did we have a wholesale loss? You know what I'm saying? You don't have to worry about what, what's coming out of the net. Expenses. You don't have to worry about anything. You just got to sell. Selling cars is the best job in the dealership. But if you want to know how to scale, here's what I would tell you. Become the number one salesperson in your dealership for sure. And don't be a professional winger. Know the skill and know how to lead your people because I'm going to explain this. The second you move over from salesperson to manager, okay? Now, by the way, some people go into management first and some people go into finance. I'm going to work both roads, okay? I put finance first because I believe it really helps people become better on the desk if they understand finance. Okay, but let's just say you move over to manager. Now you're that same person, but you get paid on all 15 people underneath you. So if you're not the number one salesperson, you're not going to be able to have the best team because you won't know how to train them. So here's the deal. And by the way, as a manager, you spend 80% of your day making new deals, putting deals together that you missed yesterday and handling upset customers and doing things like that, handling deals in finance that need to be maybe, maybe, maybe re-signed. You know what I'm saying? That's a bid in trades, all of those things. So how do you have time to train your team? Listen, you have to make time or you have to find someone to help you do it, which in case would be me, I'm, I'm there for you. But I want to say this to you. As going into management, you're no longer getting paid off of you. You're getting paid off these 15 people underneath you. Okay? The entire store and your finance guys. But I'm going to explain this to you. You have to be a leader and motivating and fired up. If you can't have a sales meeting right now, what you think about this? You want to move into, you want to move up? You want to scale up and go through the ranks? Do me a favor. Send me a video. You send me one of you doing a 10 minute video sales meeting with your team. You're going to have to know how to motivate, inspire, and fire up your team on the daily. Every great manager doesn't have meetings on Fridays. 
They have meetings every day of the week, okay? Most people, and they get this screwed up, they say, hey, we're getting ready for a big weekend. Guess what? We got to have a sales meeting. Dude, the weekends are just a bonus. Monday through Friday is where the money's made. I'm going to ask you this. How many Mondays and Fridays do you get through the month? 20. How many weekends do you get? Five. Okay. Are you more focused on the five or on the 20? Most people stay focused on the five, and that's why they have such crappy days through the week. If you want to be the best sales manager in the world, have meetings Monday through Friday. And sure, Saturday you can put out some spiff money and have a big kickoff, but guess what? Monday through Friday is where the money's made. I promise you, never forget that, okay? But the idea of it is, if you move over to management, you're responsible for all 15. 20, 55, whatever you have, those are your men. They make money, you make money. They make lots of money, you make lots of money. They don't make money, guess what? You just left your salesperson job to go into leadership because you didn't want to lead, you wanted the title. Never chase a title. Now, moving up, I said go from salesperson to finance. We've already talked about salesperson to desk man, but let's talk about what it looks like in finance. In finance, it's very easy. You just have to be very clean with paperwork. If you're not great with your paperwork as a salesperson, you're probably not going to belong in finance, okay? Because it'll cost you a lot of money. It'll probably cost you your job. But secondly, most finance people should be, notice I said should be, the best salesperson in the dealership. Why? Because think about this. A finance person, right? I want you to understand what a finance person does. You've worked this customer. You've had them for two hours. They wanted to be at 300 a month, right? And I know you bumped them to 500 a month. So now they're paying 200 more than they want. They're paying $500. They're already tired and exhausted and they've gone through the emotional exhaustion stage. And guess what happens? They get handed off to your finance man. Paying 500 a month, which was 200 higher than they wanted to be at. They're already tired. And guess what? He has to go do what? Build rapport. Okay, within 15 minutes. He's only got 15 minutes. He doesn't got two hours like you got. He's got 15 minutes. Within those 15 minutes, he not only got to build rapport, he's got to take them back out of their budget again, another 50 to $80, okay? Again, take them out of their budget for a second time. And then he has to be the best salesperson, okay? He has to be great at selling and closing, both. Nobody closes the F&I guy's deal. The F&I guy closes his own deals. As salespeople, we run and get our managers, and our managers come in and help us. When the F&I guy's in the box and he presents everything to the customer, the customer says, no, you know what? I don't think I need that. Hey, I can't afford that. You know, bought a warranty in my last car. never used it. Don't see any value in it. That's why I'm buying a new car because I got a warranty. I'm only going to keep it three years. There'd be no sense in me buying an extended warranty. He's got to say, I understand, guys. Boom, 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 boom. Take his pen. Boom. Close them. And then guess what? Do it on his own without anyone being there. And he's got to do it within 15 minutes while building rapport. F&I guys truly have the ability to make twenty to thirty to $40,000 a month if they're extremely good. But it's just like a salesperson, okay? They get paid off what they produce, okay? They get paid off how many warranties and gaps and aftermarkets, how much gross they run per copy, and what percentage of people that they actually sell all those products to. So if they run 80% on everything, and then they're running $2,500 on the back, that guy takes 100 turns, he's gonna make a lot of money. That is an F&I guy's job, but listen, that F&I guy, he doesn't move up for the title. He has to move up because he wants to make more money, and he wants to learn and understand how banks work, okay? Understand how submitting works, and then also understand how the cash flow of the company works along with closing and selling. He's preparing himself in F&I for the move of moving to the desk. Why? So that he can handle everything, structure, max out profits, and guess what? Understand what the banks won't and will do, and also make sure that he can make deals with customers that he can hold on his end as he sends them to the banks, right? He doesn't say, oh, let's go this term so we can make the customer happy and then get back to F&I, and then we don't have a bank that'll do that. He has to understand the guidelines of all his lending. It's a whole next level deal, but he also has to be a deadly salesperson. Why? Because those 15 people underneath him 
as they're walking out every day and they say, hey guys, how you doing? They say, oh, we're just looking. We're not buying anything today. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And they turn around. That manager has to say, boom, got that guy. Let's roll. Hey guys, what's up, man? I'm one of the sales managers. Glad you came out. I wanted to introduce myself. And all of a sudden, he gets involved in every single deal. And if he's a good manager, he'll get involved within two minutes of every single deal. So how do you scale fast through the ranks? Number one, it's obvious. You have to become the best salesperson in your dealership, hands down. You have to be great at closing and great at selling. Listen, I can teach you how to become a GM as a salesperson right now. I can teach you how to become a general manager within two years. Yeah, it's really easy. Time and experience don't get you there. Listen, I know a lot of GMs right now that are sitting in stores and those stores don't sell more cars, okay? They don't sell more cars. They're not moving the needle anymore. If that GM was an incredible salesperson, guess what? He would be moving the needle within his company and his company would be selling more cars and making more money monthly. You don't climb a mountain and then sit up there and then just live on that mountain. The best GMs in the world, the best GMs and managers and salespeople, they climb a mountain, break a record, come down off that mountain, they're sitting down here, they get hungry, and then the next month they go climb a bigger mountain, and then a bigger mountain, and then a bigger mountain, and they never ever stop climbing mountains. So if you want to scale, you have to never ever stop being hungry. You have to constantly understand that you can't be motivated in leadership. You have to be driven, okay? You come inside the dealership, it's a dead day, you don't sell any cars. What you do on that day has everything to do how the next day will go. The whole dealership is riding on that manager's back with what he does with those 15 sales people if they don't sell enough cars or if they don't sell cars. The pressure is there. If you don't like pressure, you never want to move up through the ranks. People want to move up through the ranks a lot of the times for one reason, because they want a salary. They want that salary. Hey, I want that $10,000 guarantee. Yeah, it could be 50,000, it could be 2,000. But I want that $10,000 guarantee. Well, guess what happens? You get guaranteed that and you don't put up the money, all of a sudden you get hacked, okay? And now you're back to the sales floor again, discouraged, unmotivated, because you went into uh, leadership and management for the wrong reason. We never scale for titles. We never want to move up through the ranks just to move up. You want to move up the ranks because you want to help other salespeople make the same kind of money that you did as a salesperson. So what your job is, if you want to move up through the ranks, is break every record right now in your company. Break every record in your store. And you have to decide, am I willing to move up and take every single person underneath me and teach them the same thing that I knew when I sold cars and I broke every record? Is it possible for me to constantly motivate and encourage and inspire and to teach people the winning attitude, right? On a daily basis and create new habits within the sales team so that you can move this new team to the levels you were once at as a salesperson. Guess what happens when you do that? You will get paid handsomely and you will move up through the ranks. And I will tell you, this is where we get into the general sales manager, general manager. General sales manager, pretty simple. He's in charge of all the managers and all the departments underneath him. New, used, finance, all that stuff. Most of the time, everything except parts, okay? And service, which is fixed. So the idea of it is you're a general sales manager. You're in charge of anything that relates with sales. It's preparing you to become a GM, but I will tell you this. A great general sales manager, a great one. You know what? The GM won't even have to do anything because the general sales manager will be so involved and so motivated to do everything because he's earning his way up that guess what? He will protect everything for the general manager underneath him and he'll do all the work and that general manager should sit back and watch that guy, dot the I's, cross the T's, watch him, motivate him, inspire him, coach him and encourage him. And guess what happens? That general sales manager, within a year, if that guy does it right, he could be able to move up into a general manager position if he's in the right company. And by the way, that person, also dealerships are buying stores everywhere. He will be the one that when they buy another store, he will either move up in his dealership 
and the other GM will go take over another one, or he'll go take over a new store, and the general manager will promote another person up underneath that general sales manager. That is the life, how it works, moving up through the ranks in a car dealership. And I want to tell you this. If you're wanting to move up, and if you want to scale up through the ranks, it took me almost seven years to go into management. Don't do it because you want the money. Because I will assure you, you will be disappointed with the money if you're great at selling right now, going into management. You know why? Because the top salespeople make more money than their managers. You have to decide to do it not for income, okay, but for leadership and creating the baddest sales team around you. And if you feel like you're born for leadership and you're born to be a leader and you want to take your men and take them to where they haven't been and lead them to new places, that's a leader. And guys that are in the car business, men and women who understand that concept are the most successful, make the most money, and guess what? They destroy it. So how do we move up through the ranks? It's very simple. Become the best salesperson in the world, period. And if you can make that happen, guess what? You choose where you go next. But I'll share it with you on this, okay? My deal is, is that I love how much money I can deposit in the bank as a person that works in a dealership. The reason why it took me so long to move up is because I didn't want to move up. I wanted to help other people, but I didn't want to move up because I enjoyed creating my own lifestyle, right? If I was a manager, going on a vacation for three weeks would be really hard because nobody would be there to watch the store. So saying, hey, imagine your manager saying, hey, I need three weeks off. Guess what happens? They're gonna be like, uh, no, you can have a week. As a salesperson, I could say, hey, I need three weeks off. And they're like, well, shit, man. You make 10 times more money than anyone else in the dealership. Take off as much time as you want. You see what I'm saying? So that was the life that I enjoyed. Then I finally crossed the path and I understood that I was going into battle zone and I was going to take my guys with me. And at that point, I took my guys that were selling 15 cars and I took them to 30. I took the guys that were at 30 underneath me and I took the guys that moved them to 40, 45, and 50. The guys that were selling 10 made them 20 car hands. And guess what happened? Took a dealership from selling 100, 150, all the way to 300. And then as a GM, we took it all the way again to 600. And guess what happened? It changed my life forever. I made more money even than when I was selling, but I prepared and I planned to teach and train every single person underneath me so that I could crush it and crush my competition that was asleep at the wheel. Guys, with this being said, if you wanna move up to the ranks, you know what you need to do. This video explains it all. Crush it, kill it, subscribe, like my channel. If you haven't texted me or reached out to me, I would love to help you. Guys, my cell phone is 918-210-0254. That's 918-210-0254. Shoot me a text. I'd love to meet you. Crush it, kill it. We'll see you in the next video, guys.